The concept behind the Magic Legends computer game showed a lot of promise. The idea of being a powerful planeswalker, visually exploring the multiverse, and collecting up and casting powerful and exotic spells was a really fun idea. Unfortunately, only four months after the game's been released, it's now been fully cancelled. Magic. I am a wizard! History. The Magic Historian. My bones hurt. Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles. My friends, we are here today to talk a bit about what happened with the Magic Legends computer game. This is a game that was actually in production for years. Originally, when the concept was presented to us, it was a pretty exciting one, right? The idea is supposed to be you genuinely get to be an actual planeswalker and you explore the different realms of Magic the Gathering. You can go to different planes. You could see the Talarian Academy. You could go to the Mountains of Shiv. Places that existed in genuinely enjoyable stories from Magic's past and locations that show up on the Magic cards themselves. So, the idea was you get together with your friends, play an MMO, we're all going to travel the multiverse together, which is a really neat idea. Ultimately, though, the game got scaled back. At some point in production, they realized that there was no way they were going to be able to deliver on the MMO promise. So at that point, they switched to an action RPG style setup where you're dealing with a game a la Diablo, like Diablo 2, right? That is really the first thing that comes to my mind when I saw the gameplay of this game. I went, oh, okay, it kind of looks like Diablo 2. But the problem, at least one of the problems, because there were a number of them, the problem for me immediately out of the gate was graphically, I found the game to be very uninspired looking. It was basically like I was looking at a game from 10 years ago. And I went, wait a minute. I'm like, this is a, a new release for the computer? Like, the, the graphics here are abysmal, which is kind of astounding. It's something you would expect for a mobile title, right? But we're dealing with something. Wizards of the Coast, they had planned to release this game not only on PC. This was also going to be coming to a number of different consoles. Originally that was the plan until this recent announcement right here from Magic Legends that says, hello planeswalkers. It is with heavy hearts that we announce Magic Legends will be shutting down on October 31st, 2021. All players who spent money in-game across Ark and the Epic Game Store during the open beta will be refunded their full purchase amounts. Servers will remain open for play until closing day. However, we will be closing the Zen Shop effective immediately. The Zen Shop, if you're familiar with modern video games at all, especially mobile games and things, you're going to be familiar with the concept of in-game currency and then the real currency of the game. And the real currency of the game is the one that you either have to spend your physical real world money on or spend an insane amount of time grinding for. The in-game currency tends to be only usable for certain things, isn't that big a deal. So the Zen shop, the Zen currency was the buy me currency. Essentially the whole purpose of the game existing. At least that's what it looks like when we look at things in the aftermath. But anyways, they're gonna be closing the Zen shop effective immediately later this week all items will instead be purchasable using Acer, Aether, our free in-game currency. Our vision for Magic Legends missed the mark, but we're proud of what we achieved. I'm gonna, re really, you're proud, you're proud of what you achieved. You spent however many years, like this game was originally announced back in 2017, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that many years, four or five years, for a game that flopped faster than most games we've ever seen. Because we're not talking about some... It's not like I decided to make a game called Gus the, the Grocery Grabber. And it's like, with heavy heart, I tried to make Gus the Grocery Grabber work. But I ultimately wasn't able to do it. It's not some little indie project. This isn't some like tiny unknown property that we've never heard of. This is literally Magic the Gathering. Right? And this game was being developed by a company, Cryptic, that's developed 
a whole bunch of games. So we don't have a new game company and we don't have some unknown property. This is genuinely Magic the Gathering. I don't know how you could say you're proud of what you achieved when you managed to take an amazing concept and run it into the ground so thoroughly that you had to quit pretty much immediately. I'm sorry, but the game only being out for a few months is quitting immediately and they did the whole like oh we're still in beta thing but it's like dude here's how i look at it you can't tell me your game is beta if everybody has access to the game and can play it it's just already been released and you have all these different layers of monetization if you have all your monetization ducks in a row and the game can be downloaded and played by anybody then the only reason you're calling it beta is because that psychologically tricks some people into giving you more leeway and going well it's not a, it's the game's just not fully developed yet like you wouldn't go to the grocery store and be like yes i will pay full per i will pay full price for this box of crackers and then they go the crackers are still in works here's 20 percent of the crackers and maybe you'll get the other 80 percent later these are beta crackers and it's like no man sorry that doesn't fly for me so as far as i'm concerned this game was fully released they had all their monetization a number of different layers which we'll talk about after we get through this uh this announcement here just that that proud of what we achieved i mean i know it's corporate speak but that it, you don't need to say stuff like that it's really really clear that you have no reason to be proud you didn't achieve anything you failed this is an absolute failure, a waste of resources and a waste of time. Nothing worthwhile was gained from this experience, from the perspective of making the game. What did you learn? Like, the, what did this failure teach you? You're proud of how quickly you failed? I don't, I don't get the proud part of it. Anyhow, thanks to Wizards of the Coast, we got to bring the expansive Magic the Gathering multiverse to a wide audience. Wow, they really, I gotta say, this just feels like a massive lie overall to try and cover themselves. In my opinion, this is an absurd thing to say. To a wide audience, as far as I understand, the audience for this game shrunk by 80 to 90% within the first month. So they lost most of their user base pretty much right away. Aside from the die-hard fans, they lost pretty much everybody and bringing the expansive magic the gathering multiverse i think there was maybe four places you could go four locations i'll be honest like i had originally wanted to get the game and review it go in depth and talk about it because i got excited about the idea of exploring Teleria and shiv these different locations i'm like oh this will be really cool but when i looked at the game i genuinely couldn't bring myself to play it it just looked like a really low-rent Diablo-esque game. And I loved Diablo 2. Like, Diablo 2 was a banger game for its day. And it still holds up now. But if you're going back and making a clone of the game that's not as fun, not as deep, and visually not even as appealing. When I looked at the Magic game, it didn't feel like it was Magic the Gathering. Even though you were technically summoning up different things from magic it just didn't translate the same feeling to a degree anyhow i'm 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 getting off on a tangent here to a degree let us return to the announcement so we got to bring the expansive magic the gathering multiverse to a wide audience and explore new angles within the established arpg genre we learned several valuable lessons along the way and we'll use them to improve cryptic's future development efforts notice how they can't pinpoint for you anything they actually learned we've learned many lessons it's like could you tell me one what's the response going to be yeah don't get involved in tire fire projects that aren't going anywhere most importantly we'd like to thank all the players who explored the multiverse with us and provided feedback during the alpha and beta testing phases we couldn't have gotten this far without you so that is the announcement obviously in very much corporate speak now this game failing isn't surprising because it really didn't deliver on a number of levels first of all the graphics were like mobile mobile game level 
garbage. So you've got a game that looks like it's poorly designed. Now, you would figure in that situation, okay, the game looks like it's poorly put together, so at least it probably runs pretty quick, right? Because they're not taking up a bunch of resources with like big flashy graphics or anything like that. But apparently the game's so, or was so laggy, I guess it still is because it still exists, but there was so many lags and glitches that there were jokes going around about the monetization where they could sell a feature where you could pay to have a reasonable frame rate. That's not a good joke to have floating around about your game. When it looks ugly, doesn't play that well, it's glitchy and laggy, you've got frame rate issues. On top of that, they had all these different monetization levels where they're just basically like, oh, we're selling different character classes, but these character classes aren't any more powerful than any other. It's just a different way to play. And they, like, they had to deal with people complaining many times about their monetization setup with booster packs and everything. So this used a number of different layers. When it comes to monetization for a game like this, you really have to emulate successful properties like Path of Exile, where Path of Exile is a huge game. Sure, it may not have been as huge when it came out right away, but it also didn't expect you to hand over money for a bunch of different things, right? Path of Exile, as far as I understand it, only really has two forms of monetization. One is a type of monetization I'm 100% cool with, which is purely cosmetic, where they're selling things where if you want things to look different, you can pay a little bit of money. And I'm of the mind that if you build a game that's free to play and you do a really good job of building it, then people will happily spend money because they already feel like they're getting their values worth. I've done this on games. There's games that I've played for a while for free and then realized, you know what? I'm having a really good time. And whoever's responsible for this good time, they deserve some money from me. So I'm going to purchase some sort of cosmetic bonus or something from their game. That sort of monetization is totally cool with me because developers should be paid for the work, right? I don't expect people to make me games for free, but if you make the game under that frustrate me into paying mentality, I'm going to leave. If your game isn't incredibly gripping and fun, why would I want to play it? And if you put these stumbling blocks in my way to make the game more difficult, and then I have to pay for to basically to obviate this, to get past the difficulty, there's no way that you're gonna get my money. So the game had this problem where it felt big and empty. So there were, there were no real end game aspects to the game whatsoever. And you had this situation where you were essentially just caught in a loop of doing the same sort of quests over and over and over. So you've got a glitchy game that's not really adding a deep experience. You've got multi, multiple layers of different styles of monetization intended to extract as much money as humanly possible from the customer base. Now, I mean, I get, I understand that Wizards of the Coast operates very much currently on an extract as much money as you can from people. But the thing is, is Magic the Gathering is a much better game than Magic Legends by a long shot. Magic Legends is basically a garbage, half-functioning reskin of Diablo 2 with far less to do and more demands for your money, which sounds like a recipe for absolute disaster. So we've reached the point where literally, after only four months of this, they've thrown up their hands and went, you know, we've, dri we've driven too many people away and not enough people are gonna pay into these monetization strategies. Some people, some people in the forums, because I spent a, a fair bit of time going through the Magic Legends forums and reading over people's different complaints and concerns. And there were so many. And some of the people who put money into the game spent $500 or more on this game. So there was the potential for them to bring in some money. But even with whales splashing out $500 for their in-game stuff, that wasn't enough for them to go, this is worth reworking. You know it's bad when they go, okay, you know, we just got to give everybody's money back at this point. The only thing they can do is try and do damage control for the Magic brand, really. And I mean, for Cryptic as well, right? This is literally at this point just how do we exit this flaming sandwich of garbage with as few people being angry at us as possible? So it's literally like 
They have to give back every penny they've made off this game. Years of development. Years of development. Giving up on being an MMORPG. Turning into an ARPG, but being a pale shadow of the things that already exist and that are free and don't try and take your money. Because like I said, Path of Exile only does two things. Cosmetics, which I stand behind, and then making you pay for some extra storage, which I didn't mention earlier in the video. So that one, some people may like, some people may dislike, but that's a far cry from, we're going to lock a bunch of character classes away. We're going to give exclusive items to you this way. We're going to make it really difficult to acquire the items you want unless you buy a obscenely expensive booster packs with crazy amounts of in-game currency or you know like four maybe three to five dollars a shot of like real world money it was it was way too greedy they wanted more money than a well-designed game should be able to demand and they didn't want to put in the effort to make it a well-designed game and they didn't want to put in the effort to really flesh out the world and make it feel deep and rich the the um, speech, basically, what the Planeswalkers would say was so incredibly dull. I watched some videos of gameplay. I even stopped by a live stream where Desolator was playing it. And the game, just, there's nothing about it that, that is worthwhile overall. The, the, the concept of it is amazing, but the execution was absolutely abysmal. Anyhow, that's really all I have to say at this point. I'm just going to end up repeating myself going over the same points. I am really disappointed because this game had a lot of potential as a concept, but they've scrapped it 100%. It's not coming back. They've stated that. So ultimately, unfortunately, the people who are working on the game are probably out of a job now. All that time was wasted, and the people who are excited about this concept and were willing to back it and put money into it, they ultimately end up disappointed as well. So this is one where nobody wins, all right? So thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. I'll see you all, my friends, in the next video.